All right, I'm trying some new technology here, kind of high tech, low tech combined. So, introduction to parameterizations. Uh, a parameter is some other variable that kind of drives, for example, uh, x and y coordinates in a rectangular coordinate system. So here we can imagine that uh, time, t, is our parameter, and our horizontal movement, x, is driven by time. So x moves according to twice the time, and y moves according to the time squared, is what I have in my equations here. So then I started just, let's make a table of it. So if we pick some times, like 0 is now, what was happening uh, maybe a second before I looked, a second after, two seconds later, three seconds later, we can compute the x values and the y values, and then plot them. So then I get a sequence of dots that I can kind of see a pattern to, so I connect Dots. Now, if I then go back and table for each point what the time was, t is negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, what I get is a path of motion along this curve. Uh, and depending on your choice of parameterization, you can control the direction of travel along a specific curve. Sometimes, however, given a parameterization, we like it to be written as a function of x and y instead of a function of x and y of a parameter. And so then you have to do some clever mathematics, and each situation is a little different. But here, I could easily take the x equation and solve for t, and then I get t as a function of x, and I can substitute that into y equation here, because t, I think, is x over 2. And then I get this new equation, y equals the square of x over 2. Uh, and if you graph that on its own, then you get this curve without the directional arrows. So per parameterizations can add direction to a two-dimensional shape. It kind of takes two dimensions and makes it three dimensions. You can imagine, perhaps, uh, an object moving along this path here. Maybe I'm sitting at home over there, having a beer one night, and I see some UFO fly through the sky, according to that parameterization. One you've seen before, uh, suppose, but maybe not thought about it in this way, uh, let x equal the cosine of time, and y equal the sine of time. Notice I'm calling it time, not an angle. And then I'm going to pick some crazy times, like pi over 4 in the past, and pi over 4 in the future. 0 is the moment I start looking, pi over 2 later, uh, 3 pi over 4 later. Right? So this would be like 1 and a half, and around 3 quarters, negative 3 quarters, whatever that is, is a decimal. And I plug in those times into both x and y here, and you get an x coordinate at each time, and a y coordinate at each time. So then ignoring time for a moment, plot those points. The point 1 over square root of 2, negative 1 over square root of 2 lives down there. 1, 0 lives right there in a regular xy coordinate system. Keep plotting your points, and then go back and label in your times. Let's see, here's time negative pi over 4, time 0, time pi over 4, time pi over 2, time 3 pi over 2 4. And then what I get is I get motion along this two-dimensional curve. And if I plotted some more points, I would find that I would get back to where I started, and then as the time keeps going, I'm going to go around, around, this in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, in this case here, I might make a note about that if I took the sine squared and added it to the cosine squared, I'm going to get 1. Well, in my situation, x is the cosine, y is the sine. So sine squared is like y squared, cosine squared is x squared. So what I must have graphed here is the equation that y squared plus x squared plus 1, which is a unit circle centered at the origin. Uh, and so that was my clever use of algebra to, to, to get out of the parameter in this uh, tutor to uh, variable equation here instead of uh, two functions as, parameter, as, as functions of the parameter. So I mentioned that uh, you can change direction. There's a variety of ways to do that. You could replace t with negative t. You could plug some other function in for instead of just t, something funkier. You could try, in this case, switching what we called x and y. So this, this time let x equal the sine of t, y equal the cosine of t. And, and make a table, graph some points for that. You know, you might try picking uh, 
time going from 0 to 2 pi, because we know sine and cosine are, are cyclical, periodic with period 2 pi. And after you do that, go back and label the times of some of the points you plotted, and note the direction that you end up with on a curve. So often when you graph a parameterization, you'll not only plot the points and try to connect the dots, but you'll also indicate the direction you're traveling uh, in the curve. So have a little bit of fun with that. Next page.